I am so frustrated right now with apps and my drone. I have a perfectly charged working drone. I have a perfectly great controller, perfectly clear sky. I've been waiting for the wind to die down. Uh, everybody's in the water scrubbing the bottom. I thought I'd get some cool shots. And my drone will not fly because apps on my Android don't, they're not compatible anymore. I've spent like an hour downloading an APK installer and downloading third-party apps and I'm just I'm literally about to pull my hair out. So imagine some beautiful views right here of the water. I will try to get the drone working. I'm super bummed and super upset but our um, GoPro footage works great so I'll show you some of the utter underwater footage of us cleaning the bottom of the boat. It's disgusting because we did not get in the water at our last anchorage so it was about four or five months that it just sat. Ugh. I think we have like our own aquarium under there. As we would like scrape, I would see the little tiny shrimp and krills or whatever like reattached to the boat. And then I also saw a bunch of little like dime to quarter size um, crabs. Oh, I'm going to go get some lunch and I'm going to try to work on this drone thing some more. We are a family of five from Texas who sold everything to live full time on our 1987 Marine Trader Tradewinds 47. We have three boys, Carter, Chase, and Caleb. We also have two cats aboard, Cheddar and Tiger. For two years, we have enjoyed cruising, exploring, beautiful sunsets, loads of family fun, and brotherly bonding. We also enjoy exploring the water, snorkeling, and diving. In the Florida Keys, the Bahamas, and who knows where to next. We want to say a special thank you to all of our patrons. What you doing? Scrubbing. Why? Because we have a fuzzy bottom. Very fuzzy bottom. Lots of hard growth. We are still getting prepared for the Bahamas. I actually think we finally have a weather window in sight. So I've got to go through all of our emergency gear. I've got th this is our EPIRB right here and our emergency ditch bag, which I have not opened in a year. So I'm going to open our ditch bag and see what's inside and see if I need to update anything. I've got a towel sunscreen. I know that sounds silly, but if you end up floating in the middle of the ocean for days at a time, the sun can be dangerous. I have personal little e so we can put little lights on each of the kids, which actually I would really like to get one of these small little guys, like it's a flashing light. I would really like to get one of those for each of my kids just to wear. I've got bottles of water. I've got one. I've got... How do I hold this and look? I've got one, two, three, four, five bottles of water. I've got two EpiPens, flares, more flares, nylon rope because nylon floats. 
uh, mini little first aid kit. I also keep copies of all of our birth certificates and passports along with our tow boat, like a tow boat card. So I have their phone number to call them. Um, so it looks like I might be okay. We're just crossing the Gulf Stream, which I'm not as stressed about because the Gulf Stream is, if you go from Miami and No Name Harbor up to Bimini, it's the shortest crossing you can do from America to the Bahamas. It's only 44 miles, 44 nautical miles. And in that whole span of space, the Coast Guard, you can reach by radio at any time. And you can see land leaving America. You can see Miami, Fort Lauderdale for about 20 miles out. And then you can see the Bahamas about seven miles coming in. So there's just a short period of time that you really can't see land. So I feel pretty comfortable about that. We always look for good weather windows. Again, I'm going to show you next the apps that we use to watch for weather because I'm a fair weather cruiser. So I watch the weather like a hawk. As I dug stuff out, I also have medicine. So I have seasick pills because Carter used to get extremely seasick. Um, more sunblock. And then I have this. It's called Highlight. So it helps you continue from being hydrated. So you can pour just a few drops of that into your water and you'll be extremely hydrated. We have mirrors for, you know, signaling people. I have pocket knives. You never know. We put everything in plastic bags um, just because salt water corrodes and it's terrible. Uh, quarantine or uh, check-in quarantine flag and an American flag. Um, you know, you just need something to wave around in case. And of course we have a ton of flares. We have some flares that are out of date because Chris is like, whatever you can, in an emergency, he just don't care. So we carried a whole case full of regular flares. Oh, I'll show you. So here's a whole case full of regular flares. And then we've got just a few that are like out of date. But again, Chris is like, who cares if we're stuck in the middle of the ocean? You use flares that are good, bad, out of date. Everything. Sorry, I'm dropping everything. Um, so I think we're okay. Um, I'm going to try to think if I'm forgetting anything. Chapstick. Chapstick's always one. I'm going to go put that with our medical stuff. Hmm. The biggest thing is to have my EPIRB. So my EPIRB is registered to my vessel. This is the EPIRB. It is actually, well, I don't want to, like, have it go off on accident. But it's a device. Okay. I got it out. So this is our EPIRB. This is our EPIRB. Um, there's two ways to set it off. So there's a button here that you actually have to like flip the switch and push the button. Or if it gets submerged under water, it will also go off. So that's probably the most important thing. It will ping our, our um, location. We also carry in our, so this is our like, life or death ditch bag but we also carry a blue dinghy bag with us everywhere we go and inside that we have a um, garment in reach which we can also use for sos then chase showed you in his sailing video some of the things he keeps with him we keep all the same similar things uh air gut air horn flares lights radio whistles all of that good stuff in our regular ditch bag okay last thing about this ditch bag so we bought this bag because it actually floats and so it'll float with us and then you can actually on it you can um tie there's three of these clips so you can clip it to your life jackets so i can actually get all three of my children clipped together with this ditch bag so that everyone's together good morning everyone hello and welcome to this friday's video and this edition of Talking From Our Aft. And real quick, we actually had some friends correct us that it's not Talking From Our Aft, it's Talking Out Of Our Aft. No, I don't no. like it. No, okay, I don't like it either. Okay, so <laughs> it, earlier in the video we went through all of our um, EPIRB kit and I told you what was in our dinghy go bag. This is our dry bag. We keep all of our dinghy stuff in it. So I wanted to show you actually what we keep. Number and, one. And the main thing is just to make it quick and easy, right? Yeah. So every time we run ashore, we just grab the bag and everything's in it, ready to roll. Yep. 
Um, so number one, we have a all around light that we put in and out of our dinghy. It does not secure to the dinghy and it, it can i just haven't taken the time to do that this is true i'm sorry but we l used to leave it on the dinghy all the time and it's been swiped so and now we've also, and we've also lost one this from got, corrosion just got, no it just got dropped remember carter yeah, dropped in the water and i thought it because it snapped here yeah it snapped so the top That's why. yeah so anyway so this is our third one yeah and oh chase come in here so the boys have a name for it. So we always say, do you have Giggle Slog? And so, I created that name. So we call it Giggle Slog. I have no idea why. <laughs> Grab Giggle Slog, that's what we say. Okay, so in our ditch bag, we also have red and green light. So if we're traversing at night, we just always have it with us. Obviously, dinghy keys with a floaty on it. A brand new... Airborne? Yeah, still sealed in the package because if it's not sealed in the package and after a few weeks or a month it's going to corrode and it may not work. I actually needed it a couple months ago and it corroded. And it was corroded so much I was honking it and I was like, well, that's useless. It didn't do anything, so we got a new one. Um, I do keep just like some band aids, like a teeny weeny little first aid kit, some band aids with some um, seasick pills, Tylenol, all that stuff. Um, let's see what else. Radio. Radio, registration, paperwork, so if we ever get pulled over. And then our flashlight. flashlight. It is waterproof. And then also, this is our Garmin inReach that I was talking about that we use in redundancy to our EPIRB, but this also can track us. So I can send out a link to family and friends. Patrons always get a link as well. And it's a satellite device. device. So we can send text messages via the app yep. and the app on our phone through and, satellite. Yep. So even if we aren't able to call or something, we can still communicate with whoever we need to via text message. So it's really handy. Um, I have it currently set on when we go to the Bahamas, it'll track us every 10 minutes. So that's that. And then the next thing we were going to talk about is our weather apps that we use to decide and determine where to anchor, where to go, and when to cross passages. Well, deciding where to anchor, that's Navionics and our Garmin. Yep. But in relation, as far as wind apps go, we basically use all of them. Everyone. <laughs> we, we look at all of Everyone. them. Everyone. <laughs> there is no, um, I would say there is no best one. And what you gotta understand is all these apps work off the same models that the weather community has built and some of them prefer like one model over the other and some of them give you the option to uh, pick and you can look at the different models and see which is which and and what the what the prediction is because remember all these are just best guesses but they're yeah. using some mathematical or algorithm that they've developed to to determine what they think is going to happen mm -hmm. so the biggest inf the biggest tip i can give is get as much information as you can Take that along with your experience, which when we started was almost nothing, and so it was mm -hmm. we learned a lot. And now we're able to take all that and put it together, and we can make some pretty good decisions, mm -hmm. and we feel a lot more comfortable. And unfortunately, that experience part is the is a big part of it. Yeah. Understanding what what it says and what you see and what you know happens, and then putting it all together and making a decision. And it also your boat determines it too. Yeah, because I'm going to be looking for different conditions than say a sailing catamaran or a monohull sailboat or even a powerboat that can get there and you know four times faster than yeah. I can. Um, so keeping so, that in mind real quick, we are a 1987 marine trader, Tradewinds 47 trawler. Mm -hmm. We are a displacement hull. We mm -hmm. cruise about eight knots. Yep. And we prefer doldrums, never following seas. Yeah, if we can help it, we really don't like following seas. We don't like anything from the beam. We would prefer for it to be perfectly flat or go into it a little bit, kind of bounce into it. Yep. Um, but All right, as far so, as weather apps, I'll post a picture somewhere of the app. Um, what what it is it? Like. Thumbnail or whatever, icon. so you can see the icon. You can see what it is that we look at. So the um, we've got a couple that are free that we look at. Windy is a big one, and that's uh, I believe owned by Google, and that's the, they got wind maps and all kinds of options there. Uh, Predict Wind is a very popular one. They mm -hmm. offer a paid subscription. Yep. 
And I think if you do Predict Win and they partner with, um, what's that other? Iridium, Iridium, Go. Iridium Go. You can somehow buy it where it's all together. Which is a different version of the Garmin in Reach yeah. idea. It's not the same, but. But I think if you buy those together, you can download from satellite, you can get weather reports and whatnot. Yep. And then also I think you can put in tracking and it'll actually yep. give you a, a lot of sailors use Predict Win because it'll give you a, a best course Your based on the sailing. Points. Well, it'll okay. tell you like you can sail this direction, they have to tack and then ah, tack and it okay. kind of helps you plan if you're trying to sail and not motor. Yeah. It's a little different being a motorboat. We just drive. Yeah. Um, wind finder is another good one. Um, you can pick points, uh, especially in the Keys here in Florida. Mm -hmm. I believe they have in the Bahamas as well. And it'll tell you what's predicted for that area. And then wind alert is another one. So we have four different wind apps that we'll look at. And each of those apps can especially uh, predict wind and is it windy as well? We'll give you the different models. Speaking of wind, sorry if it's so windy, it's, but it's blowing about 25 mile an hour today. It's windy today and we are in a nice protected spot. So um, you can look through the different mm -hmm. uh, models and you can see, and then you'll learn over time which ones you like, which ones you don't. Yeah. Joanne's got one, she's like, this is the most aggressive. And I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, well, this is the one that it's never been worse than this. It's always <laughs> like, this one always says it's the worst. Everybody else can say it's 10. This thing will say it's going to be 45. So she goes, if that one says it's good, I know we're good. Yeah. So I, I like the GFS model, but if the icon model is, I'm still ex like comfortable with it. I'm like, we can go. Then that's the time to cross because it's always aggressive. So all of those wind apps I just mentioned have a free version and several of them have a paid version or they call it a pro version. Mm -hmm. uh, I am a subscriber to Wind Alert Pro. And the reason I picked that one is because working here in the Keys, uh, we have weather stations throughout Florida. Mm -hmm. And I can actually get one of the places that we take people snorkeling is the Alligator Reef. And there is a uh, weather station on that lighthouse out there. And I'm able to get uh, every five minutes it updates, I believe it is. And I, so I can get basically up to the minute conditions out there. I know exactly what's happening. And that's huge when I'm taking other people out for a you know commercial trip. Um, but it's super nice to have it's one thing to see a prediction and then you can watch a graph and trend and see what it's actually doing and then you, it's just that much more information for you to make your decision. Um, I've got a Tide app I like. Again, I've used it in the States. I haven't used it in the Bahamas yet. It's called Tides Near Me. That one's kind of nice. It gives you your high tides, your low tides, your times, uh, predictions out for the next several weeks and you can pick it where you're at because tides differ depending on where you're at. Mm -hmm. But they've got tide stations all throughout the Florida Keys yep. and that's been pretty nice. It tells you your sunrise, sunset, that kind of thing. As far as uh, radar, or let me go back. I have a lightning app and it's just called lightning and you can set it, give it permission to follow you and then it will give you alerts and you can set the distance 20 miles out, 100 miles out, 10 miles out, whatever. And it'll buzz on you and let you know when there's lightning in the area. Um, so that's really important. And then I've got several radar apps I use for, for storms. I've got one called my radar. That one is just a live radar. It's the most mm -hmm. current, and it shows you what it doesn't do a prediction. I believe it actually does if you have the paid yeah. version, the pro yeah, version. We, don't have that. we just use the free one, and that's really nice. Um, it just gives a little more detail, we think. And then we use the Weather Channel along with the Fox 4 WAP. That's W A P P. That one was actually from Texas. But we we've love actually, our Texas Fox 4 Weather app. But it does weather throughout the whole country, and it does a good job of um, giving us the. It's very user friendly. Yeah, it gives us the, uh, the radar. It's really nice. It does give us a predictive radar for free. And, uh, and then you can touch hourly and it'll give you hourly and daily predictions as well. You have an additional one for I whether I really you like, you're going to laugh, and it's, uh, someone recommended it to me, uh, Prowler Cats. They are a catamaran that travels around um, much more aggressively than we do. They're down in the Southern Caribbean, so if they use it, I trusted them. It's called Weather Kitty. <laughs> and every day you get a different cat based on your weather conditions, and the cat's either soaking wet, poofy and humid, or whatever. It's adorable. But it's very accurate with the um, rain predictions and wind predictions. And if it's over a 10% chance of rain, we close the hatches because we know that it's going to rain. And then their radar is probably my second favorite radar compared to my radar. the My Radar yeah. app. I do feel so. like their predictions for rain are the most accurate that we've yeah. seen. Weather Kitty rain and, predictions. And my, my radar will give you, you can set it for alerts. And I think Weather Channel, a lot of them do it. But on ours, my radar sends me an alert and it'll say like rain starting in 15 minutes or starting in an hour or 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty right on as well. So those alerts are kind of nice to give you the heads up. Hey, go close your hatches. Yep. Because it only rains 
as long as it takes you to go close all the hatches. Yeah. So if you're away from the boat, it's going to downpour for hours. If you're home and you run around and close them really quick, it's going to stop raining within like five minutes. So, um, but those are the different apps we use, and I really can't stress enough: it's not about what the app says. It's information for you to make the decision, and don't disregard um, looking at what it's actually outside. Mm -hmm. And also, don't forget your memory. And there's two things that goes with that. One is don't forget past experiences and similar conditions and what they what they uh, gave you. Mm -hmm. And the other one is don't forget what happened a couple days ago. Mm -hmm. So what I mean by that is the weather or the uh, the ocean has kind of a memory for a little bit as far as the weather goes. And if you have three or four days of winds all going in the same direction and you've got a lot of fetch so like stuff from the atlantic ocean coming in it can build some big swells those big swells don't just stop like instantly just because it's calm today the other day we went out and um it, it was it, like two knots of wind yeah it was almost dead calm no wind but it, it had been blowing 25 to 30 mile an hour winds in the same direction for three days and we went out there and there were eight and ten foot swells they were big rolly spread out swells but it was like you Not look in the wind you yeah you look either. at the wind and you're like whoa and the wind was even coming from a different direction from the side mm -hmm. and um so so don't forget the ocean takes time to settle down it doesn't change instantly mm -hmm. um so think about that especially on those big crossings mm -hmm. and a, a lot of times when you're crossing the gulf stream and some other big crossings it's you want a three-day weather window because you want a day for the wind to calm down so you got a calm day and that's when the day the ocean settles yep. then you got your second day which is normally your crossing day and then you've got a third day which is your backup if it's slow if you go slower than you think yeah. if you got stuck if you got delayed whatever and wind doesn't come in faster than yeah. you think you still have a day yeah you're giving yourself that day buffer at the other end of it yeah. so we're always looking like if it's a one day crossing and it's a it's a pretty uh you know deep crossing like the gulf stream you've got your mona passage you've got from the bahamas down to the dr Whatever, however long it's going to take, you want to give yourself a day before and a day after at least. Mm -hmm. Maybe two if it's a longer passage. Yeah. Um, so just stuff to think about. Mm -hmm. That's what we're thinking about anyway. That's that's how we look at the stuff. Mm -hmm. Right, wrong, and different. You can do whatever you want. Yep. Be the captain of your own boat. Yep. But uh, that's what we're looking for. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you hit the like button. Subscribe to with the bell thingy so you get all of our <laughs> alerts and notifications. There you go and uh, leave us a comment let us know if you have any other questions thoughts or opinions thanks so much you guys have a great week and remember enjoy the journey are you peeing no come on let's take it okay Just look at the water it's so clear